60 Minutes, Rewind. Of all the problems facing the United States right now, none are more important than health care. President Obama says rising costs are driving huge federal budget deficits that imperil our future, and that there is enough waste and fraud in the system to pay for health care reform if it was eliminated. At the center of both issues is Medicare, the government insurance program that provides health care to 46 million elderly and disabled Americans. But it also provides a rich and steady income stream for criminals who are constantly finding new ways to steal a sizable chunk of the half a trillion dollars that are paid out each year in Medicare benefits. In fact, Medicare fraud, estimated now to total about $60 billion a year, has become one of, if not, the most profitable crimes in America. We caution you that this story may raise your blood pressure, along with some troubling questions about our government's ability to manage a medical bureaucracy. If you want to find Medicare fraud, the first place you should look is South Florida, where we were told it is pushed aside cocaine as the major criminal enterprise here. It's a quiet crime, no sirens or gunfire. The only victims are the American taxpayers, and they don't even know they're being ripped off. FBI Special Agent Brian Waterman, who we rode with for several days, told us the only visible evidence of the crimes are the thousands of tiny clinics and pharmacies that dot the low-rent strip malls. You don't even know they're there because there's never anyone inside. No doctors, no nurses, and no patients. This office number should be manned and answered 24 hours a day. This tiny medical supply company billed Medicare almost $2 million in July and a half a million dollars while we were there in August. But we never found anybody in, and our phone calls were never returned. Say they're currently on the other line. Oh. Well, do they want you to hold? Sometimes they don't even have offices. We went looking for a pharmacy at 7511 Northwest 73rd Street that billed Medicare $300,000 in charges. It turned out to be in the middle of a public warehouse storage area. They've already told us that there's no offices here, there are no businesses here. In fact, they're not even allowed to have a business here. Waterman is the senior agent in the Miami office in charge of Medicare fraud. And Kirk Ogrowski, a top Justice Department prosecutor, oversees half a dozen Medicare fraud strike forces that have been set up across the country. This one operates out of a warehouse at a secret location in South Florida and includes investigators from the FBI, Health and Human Services, and the IRS. There's a health care fraud industry where people do nothing but recruit patients, get patient lists, find doctors, look on the internet, find different scams. There are entire groups and entire organizations of people that are dedicated to nothing but committing fraud finding a better way to steal from Medicare. Is the Medicare fraud business bigger than the drug business in Miami now? I think it's way bigger. What changed? The criminals changed. Sophistication. They, they figured out that rather than stealing $100,000 or $200,000, they can steal $100 million. We've seen cases in the last six, eight months that involve a couple of guys that, if they weren't stealing from Medicare, might be stealing your car. You know, we were the king of the drugs in the 80s, we're king of healthcare fraud in the 90s and the 2000s. And what did they tell you? But it's not just Miami. In March, the FBI arrested 53 people in Detroit, including a number of doctors, and charged them with billing Medicare more than $50 million for unnecessary medical procedures. And in Los Angeles, the City of Angels Medical Center recruited homeless people off the street to fill their empty beds offering them cash and drugs, plus clean sheets and three squares a day, while billing Medicare tens of millions of dollars for their stay. We have to understand, this is a major fraud area. United States Attorney General Eric Holder has taken a crime that's been in the backwaters of law enforcement and made it a top priority at the Justice Department. Why do you think it's been so attractive for the criminals? Because I think it's been pretty easy. Um, I think that they have found a way in which they have been able to get pretty substantial amounts of money with not a huge amount of effort, and at least until now, without the possibility of uh, great detection. With much fewer risks. Much fewer risks. Um, you'll, you'll see some of these people and they'll say, you know, there's not a chance that you're going to have some other drug dealer shooting at you. Um, the chances of in being incarcerated were lower. Uh, the amount of time that you would spend in jail um, was smaller. All of which is, is, is different now. You're waking up every day making twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars every day, almost literally, 
And you're like, wow, I mean, I just won the lottery. Let's call this guy Tony. That's not his real name and obviously not his real face. But before he was ratted out by a friend and brought down by the FBI, he was making Wall Street money running a string of phony medical supply companies out of this building. They were theoretically providing wheelchairs and other expensive equipment to Medicare patients. How much money did you steal from Medicare? About $20 million. $20 million? Yes. Was it easy? Real easy. And you're not exactly a criminal mastermind. <laughs> no, not really. It's more like common sense. That's all you need here. Did you actually ever sell any medical equipment? No. No. Just have somebody in an office answering the phone like if we're open for business and wake up in the morning, check your bank account and see how much money you made today. You didn't have any medical equipment. You didn't really have any clients either, did you? No. All of it was fake? All of it was fake, yes. And you would just fill out some invoices and some forms and send them to, to Medicare? And yeah, that's it. And 15 or 30 days, you'll have a direct deposit in your bank account. I mean, it's, it was ridiculous. It was more like taking candy from a baby. According to the FBI, all you have to do to get into this business is rent a cheap storefront office, find or create a front man to get an occupational license, bribe a doctor or forge a prescription pad, and obtain the names and ID numbers of legitimate Medicare patients you can bill the phony charges to. There's a whole industry of people out there that do nothing but provide patients. When you say provide patients, what do you mean? I'm just talking about lists of patients, people's names, social security numbers, addresses, and date of birth. With those four things, you can bill for a patient. In order for Medicare to pay, you need to have a Medicare patient. Where do you get those? There'll be people that sell you a list of maybe $10 per patient, and I'll buy 1,000, 10,000 maybe at a time. And then you just fill in the, that patient's name, and you send it. And then I use the same patients with the same company. Then the next company, I use the same patients and keep using them. And they'll pay for the same patient every time. Once the crooked companies get hold of the patient list, usually stolen from doctor's offices or hospitals, they begin running up all sorts of outlandish charges and submit them to Medicare for payment, knowing full well that the agency is required by law to pay the claims within 15 to 30 days and that it only has enough auditors to check a tiny fraction of the charges to see if they're legitimate. If they're not, it's usually people like 76-year-old Clara Mahoney who catch them. She began to notice all sorts of crazy things turning up on her quarterly Medicare statements back in 2003, things that Medicare paid for on her behalf and that she never ordered, never wanted, and never received. What kind of things? Oh, air mattresses, a wheelchair, uh, urine bag for my leg <laughs> was getting so I didn't want to open up the uh, the explanation of benefits because uh, you know it was like oh no not again Mahoney who says she hasn't been sick in 30 years began calling Medicare to tell them that someone was ripping them off but the only responses she received were letters saying that someone was looking into it the bogus charges are still turning up on her statements. And I continue to report, and I, I kept saying, can't you flag my account? You know, I'm not getting any equipment or supplies, nothing. So how many years have they been looking at it? Six years. <laughs> Once criminals like Tony get their hands on usable patient numbers, they try and charge Medicare for the most expensive equipment possible, which requires having access to a list of Medicare codes. And what were some of the best oh, codes? Artificial limbs electric arms, electric wheelchairs. Um, I mean, a regular patient, you can put them on two artificial legs and an artificial arm and they'll pay for it. And that's what happened to former federal judge Ed Davis. He was one of those patients who started getting charges on his Medicare statement for artificial limbs. I looked at it and it had charges for a prosthesis and I knew I had my arms. Did you get the left arm and the right arm on the same bill? Both arms, same bill. Yeah. And you obviously have two good arms. The same ones I've had for over 70 years. Didn't anybody at Medicare check to see if any of these charges were valid? Sometimes they'll do, but by the time they did it, it was too late. Too late? Yeah, we already made three, four hundred, five hundred thousand on it. And then we will never send them nothing back. And then in 30 days, they'll send an inspector to your office, and by that time, it's all closed down. It's all closed down. So they would pay first and audit later? Yes. <laughs> There's something I don't understand. I mean, you're saying essentially people just fill out the phony paperwork, they send a bill to Medicare, and they pay it. 
That's why you have companies that can run for 60 and 90 days and bill for ridiculous things because there are very few checks and balances to even determine whether these things, A, were medically necessary, B, were ever given, or C, even physically possible for a patient with the kind of conditions they have. The FBI calls it pay and chase, and riding around with them, we saw plenty of examples. This tiny pharmacy in a Hialeah strip mall went from billing Medicare $13,000 in May to billing nearly a million dollars a month later. This place billed $800,000 in, in the month, month of June? June? Correct. It's a pretty small place. By the time we were there in August, the FBI says the owners had already burned the company, shut it down, and moved on to another operation. We were here last week. It was, uh, there was stuff on the shelves. The business still had a name on it. You can still see from where the tape is that someone just took this off. To understand just how preposterous all of this is, the FBI says that this tiny little store collected six times more money from Medicare in June than the largest Walgreen pharmacy in the state of Florida. Quite an achievement since neither the FBI nor the proprietor of the bingo parlor next door ever saw a customer coming or going. What's the deal with the pharmacy? I've never seen people only twice. No customers? No customers. It's always been locked. We obviously had a few questions to ask of the people at Medicare and requested an interview with the person in charge of preventing fraud. That turned out to be Kim Brandt, Medicare's Director of Program Integrity. We went around with an FBI agent and a woman from Health and Human Services. They took us to storefront after storefront after storefront billing three or four hundred thousand dollars a month and they were completely empty nobody there i mean how did they get away with that we're as frustrated by that as the law enforcement officials that you went out with and in fact our primary focus over the past two years has been to tighten our enrollment standards to make it so it's much harder for people like that to be able to get in the program and to be able to commit that kind of fraud look i i i'm sure that you're aware of these problems but it it doesn't seem like you're doing a very good job. I don't mean you personally, but I mean the, the government. This is still like a huge problem in getting worse, right? Well, it really does come down to the size and scope of the Medicare program and the resources that are dedicated to oversight and anti-fraud work. One of our biggest challenges has been that we have a program that pays out over a billion claims a year, over $430 billion, and our oversight budget has been extremely limited. About that, there is little dispute. Medicare has just three field inspectors in all of South Florida to check up on thousands of questionable medical equipment companies. Clearly more auditing needs to be done, and it needs to be done in real time. Why has it taken Medicare so long to figure out they were being scammed? I think lack of resources, probably. Um, and then I think people, I don't think, necessarily thought that something as well-intentioned as Medicare and Medicaid would necessarily attract um, fraudsters, but I think we have to understand that it certainly has. The Obama administration is providing Medicare with an additional $200 million to fight fraud as part of its stimulus package, and billions of dollars to computerize medical records and upgrade networks should help Medicare catch more phony charges. But Tony, who has just begun serving his 12-year prison sentence, says there's no shortage of people in Miami waiting to take his place. How many people in Miami were doing this? i say at least 2,000 people, at least 2,000, 3,000 companies. Well, presumably some of them are going to be legitimate. i say less, less than 5%. Less than 5%? Yes. If I went to the phone books and looked under medical equipment suppliers, 95% of the companies would be phony? Yes, sir.